with all of the different OSPF route types that we've looked at, and we've seen some tables that have been, you know, practically two screens long, and here we have an OSPF routing table that is literally one entry long, but no matter how big they are, no matter what kind of routes they are, there are always going to be two numbers inside these brackets, the ones that are highlighted. And the first one is going to be the same for every OSPF route by default. And that's the administrative distance of the route. And that's the measurement of the route's trustworthiness or the source of the route's trustworthiness, I should say. And your AD there is always going to be 110. And with some other protocols, including EIGRP and BGP, you can have a different AD for an external route, you can have a different AD for an internal route by default, but that does not happen with OSPF. It's 110 across the board. That is adjustable, but it's gonna be a while before you hit that in your studies, and frankly, it's not something you're gonna do a lot of in the real world either. It's the second number here that we have to watch out for, and that is the cost of the route. And cost is a, actually a pretty generic term, but the thing is when you hear cost as far as a route goes, you're really talking about OSPF. That is the official word or official term we use for the metric, and that is the cost of the route. Now, the cost of the interfaces along the route that are added to get this value are dependent on the interface's speed. And in many networks with OSPF, you won't have to tweak any costs. But in some, you're going to need to, and there are actually three different ways to do this. Some are just local to a particular interface, and others, well, you're about to see the one that I really want to bring to your attention, and that is auto cost reference bandwidth. That's the command. But before we get to the command, we got to know exactly what that reference bandwidth is. Now, OSPF, again, it assigns a cost to every OSPF-enabled interface, and that cost is based on the port speed. That sounds familiar. Sounds like a little something we saw with STP. Now, the default formula that OSPF uses to calculate the interface cost is reference bandwidth, divided by interface bandwidth. We can't really change the factors in the formula, but we can change the values in the formula. And many OSPF documents you'll read will explain that formula like this, where the reference bandwidth is 100 million bits per second, and the formula is 100 million divided by the interface bandwidth in BPS, bits per second. And there's nothing wrong with this. I personally like to express it a little bit differently. Use whichever one you're more comfortable with. I like to just say 100 meg instead of 100 million BPS because I have found over the years that makes the calculation a lot easier to do without writing anything down. And if you have an Ethernet interface, let's say, you know that's running at 10 meg. So 100 divided by 10, gives you your OSPF cost of 10. And that's why I have an Ethernet interface here so I can prove that. Now I know a lot of you are thinking, why don't they get an Ethernet interface? Why aren't they all fast or gig or something like that? Well, this is one reason, actually the main reason. And it's show IP OSPF interface followed by the interface name and tons of great information in here. And again, I haven't shown you the topology yet because it doesn't matter yet. I want us to concentrate on the cost, but you can see we've got a couple of neighbor adjacencies there. But here's what we're concentrating on right now is that cost of 10. So that is our default for an Ethernet interface. And here's the lab that we're working with and the cost that we're working with right now. And I say it right now because the topology is not going to change, but those costs are going to change. Just put all three routers in area 0, 10110 slash 24. You can see that router 3's Ethernet 0 interface has a cost of 10, and router 1 and router 5 interfaces both have a cost of 1 as well. One being a fast Ethernet interface, that's on router 1, and a gig Ethernet on router 5. Now the formula we were just talking about, it occasionally calls for a little tweaking, especially with the two default OSPF costs on the next screen. Uh, as unlikely as it is that you're going to see a lot of these first two values, it doesn't hurt to memorize them for the exam. 56K uh, interface is going to default to an OSPF interface cost of 1,785. 64K link, 1,562. A T1 line, you know, serial interface, and we definitely have some of those in our lab, yeah, is going to default to 64. Ethernet defaults to 10. We just saw that. And here are the two that can cause not consternation necessarily. It's not going to mean that you're dropping connectivity, but it's also going to mean that you're not using your facilities to the max. And that's the fact that the fast Ethernet cost and the gig Ethernet cost are going to be the same. 
Now, 100 divided by 100, that's how we get the fast ethernet. If you use my little method there, it's 100 meg divided by 100. <laughs> that's the speed of a fast ethernet port. That gives us one. Gig ethernet is going to be one, but the actual formula here, <clears throat> pardon me, would be 100 divided by 1,000, which is 0.1 which does not round down to zero. We can't do that, and the formula's not gonna do it, so we end up with a fast ethernet and a gig ethernet interface having the exact same cost. Now, if you have both of those interface types in your OSPF network, you really don't want those interfaces to have the same cost when one is much faster than the other, because as your network grows, of course, you're gonna have one link that's running you know, at gig ethernet, another one running at fast ethernet. They're gonna be represented by the same cost. So we don't really want that. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean your packets aren't going to get where they're going. It may just mean they're not going to get there as quickly as they could. Now, our R1, R5 adjacency, it's a perfect example of speed versus cost. And as we saw a moment ago, and as I'll be glad to verify here in a moment, our R5 interface is a gig interface running at 1,000 meg. R1's fast Ethernet interface is literally running at one-tenth that speed. But when we go live here in a moment, we're going to see that the cost is exactly the same. So let's go to one first. And tons of great info. I know I keep saying that, but it's such a great troubleshooting command, verification command. There's our cost of one, and now we'll go up to five. And I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> And here we go, and we have a cost of one. So again, nothing's broken here, but it's not as accurate as we would like it to be. So perhaps we want to change that. And what we're actually going to change here is the reference bandwidth part of that formula. And the, the full command actually has two hyphens. You can change it, you can, excuse me, change it. You can enter it just as auto ref, but please know the full command, auto cost reference bandwidth. And what the recommendation is, I've seen on some Cisco docs, and it's a good recommendation, is that if you have gig ethernet interfaces or faster in your network, you should use this command to set the reference bandwidth at least as high as the bandwidth of the fastest interface in your OSPF network. I mentioned and probably higher just in case you get some even faster interfaces in the future. But again, if gig ethernet is as fast as it gets, setting an auto reference of 1000, uh, would be a pretty good idea. So let's put that into action first and then we'll go right back to what we were looking at because this is a fascinating command. And again it's auto cost, there's your first hyphen, and reference bandwidth. And just a hint here or, or a tip because what's always helped me to learn new commands over the years is entering the full command as I'm learning it. Save the abbreviations for later. I know some of you hate to type. Okay, I get, I get that. Um, occasionally, I hate to type as well. But go ahead and type out the full command until you're comfortable with it, and then you can just do auto ref all you want to. And you'll notice it says the reference bandwidth in terms of megabits per second. And that's why I also like to use the M bits value when I'm working with the formula and I haven't changed anything. So I will go ahead and put 1,000 here. And uh, interesting message here, you know, it tells you first that the reference bandwidth is changed. Please ensure reference bandwidth is consistent across all routers. Hmm, that's interesting. But notice it just says, please ensure. It doesn't drop any adjacencies because it's different. Because right now, router 5 has adjacencies with both, oh, excuse me, with both 3 and 1 and a couple of other routers I threw in there. So it has four adjacencies right now on a couple of different segments, but none of them were dropped because I put because I changed the reference bandwidth. So while you're being asked, hey, please ensure that this is consistent, it is not a requirement. Very important line in the sand there. It's not required. They're just asking you politely to do it. So we're going to stop right there. At the beginning of the next video, we will run a show IP OSPF interface command here, see what the change is and see if we ought to do this anywhere else. We'll have that right at the beginning of the very next video.